Good morning. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, 2022. Um, I need to change our schedule again. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, frustrating. Things are somewhat up in the air. So, But the bottom line is this week, with God's help, should be a normal week. I'm not planning to take off any days this week unless something changes. Um, I was planning to have to take off Wednesday and Thursday, but that's now changed to next week. So we'll talk about next week later. But for this week, with God's help, we'll be together normally every morning and Thursday night at 7 p.m. With God's help. Twyla Tharp is a dancer and a choreographer, a master of modern ballet. I have followed her for her entire career, and I am in awe of her work, her accomplishments. I've loved the dances that she created, that she did herself, that she created for others, spanning a career of decades. And a few years ago, she wrote a book, Keep It Moving, Lessons for the Rest of Your Life. <clears throat> Of course, Twyla Tharp, her whole life, she has been dancing professionally, which means, of course, pushing her own body to extremes, dealing with injuries, staying in shape. And as she reaches retirement, she wrote this work, this book, Lessons for the Rest of Your Life, about the importance of exercise as we age. And it's certainly a very important topic. But she discusses the subject more broadly than just the real requirement and the benefits of exercising as we get older. But she also discusses that the basis of most exercise, isometric exercise, calisthenics, weight training, in all of these kinds of exercises, we are pushing against something that does not move or only moves with great effort. We're pushing against a wall. We're pushing against a bar. We're pushing against weights. We're pushing against a machine. We're pushing against parts of our own body. And she then makes the point, beyond just the physical aspect of exercise, that this is an apt metaphor for life. We face obstacles against which we push, and we grow stronger from the pushing even if we don't move those obstacles. <coughs> or even if we barely move those obstacles, it is the pushing that strengthens us. It was incredible to me to see almost the same lesson from Rabbi Menachem of Chernobyl, the great Hasidic Rebbe, who makes a comment on last week's Torah reading at the very beginning of the Torah, where the Torah says, concerning each of the days of creation, Vayihi Erev, Vayihi Voker. And it was evening and it was morning. And that line repeats itself. And we repeat that line. He makes the point, Erev comes first, evening, darkness, and then Boker, light. The lack precedes fulfillment in all things. It is when we lack something and we push back against it that we achieve light. And that is a precise expression of perhaps the most repeated underlying theme of the entire Torah and the goal of studying Torah. We learn about obstacles. We learn about the obstacles that everyone and collectively we as a nation in different groups face. We learn about challenges. We learn about setbacks. And we learn how to grow from them and we learn how not to grow from them. We learn good examples of coping with these challenges, and we also learn, hopefully, 
what not to do under those kinds of circumstances. So I want to share with you this morning, very briefly, a theme that runs through the entire Torah. It's something that we have discussed in different forms and different contexts, but it is presented very dramatically at the very beginning of the Torah, at the end of last week's Torah portion, yesterday's Torah portion, and it concerns this week's portion of Noah. And this is a lesson that I learned from my friend, who is also my student, who also has become my teacher, Abe Mesrich. Now, before I share this, I just want to say, I know people who are named Adam. Adam. And they are wonderful people. I love them. I admire them. I also know people named Noah. Noah. And they too are wonderful, wonderful people. I love them. I admire them. And what I'm going to share with you this morning does not reflect on any Adam or Noah that you or I know, but rather to reflect on the way in which these two names are explained in the Torah. (coughs) At the end of yesterday's Torah reading, we see that the world, after having been created by God, declines morally, spiritually, and by the end of yesterday's Parsha, the Parsha Bereshis, things are really in big trouble. And then there is a baby who is born, and the baby is named Noah. 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 The word literally means to comfort or to rest, to ease. And the Torah explains the reason for the choice of his name. The Torah says, this boy is named Noach. Ze yenachamenu. This child will grow up to comfort us, to console us, to give us rest. Mimasenu ume itzvon yodenu min hoadama asher eru rahashem. This boy will grow up to give us respite, to give us con- consolation, to give us relief from our trouble and from the damage that we have caused to the earth, which has now been cursed by God. So what we learn in this week's Torah portion, the Parsh of Noah, is that Noah literally carries humanity and the animal kingdom forward. He saves his family and the animals from the mabul, from the flood. Everything else is wiped out. And everything in the world that we have today since that time comes from what Noah saved. His children become the nations of the world. The animals on his ark become the animals of that are here in the world. He really did provide a respite or a relief from the curse that God had cursed the earth. Adam, Adam, is named from the word Adama, earth. He's named because he was created Meha Adama from the earth. So his name is the center of his story. The name that he carries, Adam, is from where he was created. He was created from the earth. That is his name. That is his character. That's his life. But here's the thing. Since his name is the center of his own story only. It only concerns, relates to, represents his own birth. Well, 
once he passes away, that story is over. There is no legacy that he can leave that will last beyond his own life because his life has been about himself at the center of the story. And what we see from the beginning of yesterday's Parsha, from the beginning of Bracious, is that although, yes, he was the culmination of creation, he was created from the earth, but of course, in the course of his life, it deteriorates. And especially after he has passed away, it deteriorates remarkably. Adam is named for himself, but his legacy does not last. Noah is named for what he will do for others. Noah's life is defined by the giving of his name in yesterday's portion and by the narrative that unfolds in this week's portion. His life is defined through what he does for others, not for himself. He saves others. And through devoting his life to saving others, his legacy is with us today. Now, I want to be very, very clear. There is nothing wrong with being named Adam. It's a beautiful name. Again, I know people named Adam, Adam, that are wonderful, beautiful, selfless people. And being named Noah is no guarantee. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to speak ill about anybody, but uh, there are a couple of Noahs that I know that uh, did not turn out so well. It's no guarantee. But the names in the Torah teach us a lesson about character. If we live our lives with ourselves at the center of our lives, then our legacy will not endure beyond us. If we live our lives with others at the center, that creates and leaves a legacy that endures and flourishes far beyond our own lifetime. A few years ago, there was a movie. It was a great movie. It's called Life of Eli. If you have a chance to watch it, maybe you would enjoy it. But there's a line in that movie that I'll never forget. One of the characters says to another, the secret of life is to do more for others than you do for yourself. The secret of life is to do more for others than you do for yourself. That's the difference between Noah and Adam, the difference expressed in the meaning of their names. And regardless of our actual name, we need to choose if we will be an Adam type of person or if we will be a Noah type of person. That's the choice that every one of us must make. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.